All right, hello guys. Once again, uh, one of our math videos that we're gonna be doing. This math video is required to watch. Uh, this will be the second video that is required. So thank you so much for watching. I will try to keep it brief as always, but what I did want to do is just kind of recap this week. All right, we are, uh, as time goes on, as we get closer to the end of the semester, we are limited with the amount of days that we have. So this is very important. Since this week we were only able to meet twice uh, in the Zoom, I do want to recap everything once again to help uh, promote your learning and understanding. And I'll try to you know keep it as, as simple and as straightforward as possible, uh, just for you guys' benefit. So here we go, okay, function, here we are. Functions, the main definition I want you guys to be aware of, of a function. What is a function? A function is any expression. Here we go, I even double circled it. Any expression that has only one output, which is our Y value. This is why I put the Y right there for each input, which is our X value, All right? So if you have one X value, you should only have one corresponding Y value as a function. That is a function, one to one, all right? A function can be represented multiple ways. It could be represented multiple ways, and this is what we were going over on Tuesday, all right? It could be a graph, and we're gonna go more on graph later. A function could be represented by an input-output table, right? You have an equation, uh, if you have an input x, you know, of two, you put it into the equation, you get a specific output, you know, six, something like that, all right? And also coordinate points. Coordinate points coincide with graph. You can plot the coordinate points, and if you draw a vertical line, which I'm going to get to in a sec, if it touches on one x value, if the vertical line touches more than one point, you do not have a function. Right? Because remember, a function for every one x value, there's one y value. Right? One output for each input for function. All right? Can be represented multiple ways by a graph or an input-output table or a coordinate points. Here's our definition. I really want to define vertical line test. So I'm going to scoot this down just a little bit. A vertical line test, and I'm going to show you an example of this is a test that you can always use, always use on any graph to determine if it's a function. So, you know, obviously the vertical line test really can't be used on an input-output table. Technically, if we just have coordinate points without graphing them, a vertical line test cannot be used. So the vertical line test right here can be used on any graph, on any graph to determine if it's a function, all right? So on a graph, vertical line test to determine a function, here's how you do it. All you do is place a vertical line. I mean, it could just be you drawing up and down on a graph, or you could just imagine it. If you place a vertical line anywhere on the graph, and this vertical line only touches the graph once throughout the whole graph, it's a function. If it touches twice, that means it is not a function. That means there are two y values for one x value, All right? So vertical line test, super easy, fun test to use on any graph to determine if it's a function. Okay, so I know there's kind of background writing right here, just focus on the white. Let me make sure that you guys can see. All right, this is what I was meaning about the different representations of functions. So let's see if each one is a function or not. Here we have an input output table. All right. Input of x, output of y. Here we have coordinate points. All right. We have x values and y values. And then down here we have graphs. All right. So these are some of the main ways to represent functions. Now we want to see if they are functions or not. All right. So on our input output table, we have <clears throat> inputs of two, three, four, five, and six. So basically, if my x value is two, my y value is negative four. If my x value is three, 
my y value is negative three. There might be some equation or some rule to the function that makes us get this. Obviously, I didn't write it down. This is just as an example. Uh, for my input is four, output negative two. If my input is five, my output is negative one, and so on and so on. If my input is six, my output is zero, okay? A little trick when it comes to input-output tables and coordinate points. If you see that every single x value in this graph is different, you know for sure you're going to have a function, all right? For it to be not a function, there would have to be multiple of the same x values and then have different y values. For example, if this was 2, negative 4, if I have another 2 right here and have a different output than negative 4, not a function. And we're going to see that in the coordinate points. So each input has a 1 output. So guess what? This input-output table is a function. Now let's look at these coordinate points right here. X value of negative 4. Think about graphing. X value of negative 4, Y value of 2. Also input-output. Input of negative 3, output of 3. Input of negative 2, output of 1. If we were to have just these three points right here, we would have a function. For each input, there is one output. But we have another coordinate point right here. We have negative 4 and 5. Uh-oh. See, this is what I mean about we have the same input. We have the same x value. How many different outputs, though, do we have for this one input? Uh-oh, we have two. So two y values, two outputs for one input. These coordinate points are not a function. Here is my favorite way to determine a function is the vertical line test. We have a linear function right here. We have a circle. We have a squiggly graph. We have a parabola that's opening up left or right. So here's what I mean about the vertical line test. Anywhere on this graph, you can draw a straight up and down line. You can draw multiple if you want. Just draw a straight up and down line. Now ignore the axes, ignore the y-axis and the x-axis. So here's my lines. How many times did the, this graph right here touch my vertical line using the vertical line test? Boom, it only touched once. Another vertical line, how many times did it touch? Boom, only once. Another vertical line, how many times did it touch? Once. So with this vertical line test that I did, it only touched the graph one time on each. One time on each, one time on each, one time on each. Guess what? This is a function, vertical line test, okay? Specifically, this works because if you think about it, say this is my x value. Say my x value is 10. This was the point 10. Look up or down, what, how many different y values do I have? I only have one y value, right? So this is why the vertical line test works. If this x value right here is negative 5, look up or down, how many y values, do, y values do I have? I only have one y value. Oh, sweet. That's a function. Function, function, function. Look at the circle. I love circles. Circles are awesome, right? It wouldn't make sense to draw the vertical line over here, right? No, because you have to draw it on the graph. Look at the whole part of the graph, okay? Right here, draw a vertical line. Pew, pew. Uh-oh. Vertical line test. It's not straight, but you guys get the point. Crosses right here, crosses right here. Uh-oh. We have two outputs for one input. My input is right here. That's my x value. For my one x value, how many y values do I have? I have two y values, not a function. Very simply, vertical line test, if it touches more than once, in this case it touches twice, not a function. All right, going on. My squiggly line, if I anywhere where I draw a vertical line, only touches once, only touches once, only touches once. Definitely a function, all right? Don't let the squiggly line fool you, okay? Last but not least, I love parabolas. This one is opening uh, up to the right, okay? If we were to draw a vertical line down the center right there, how many times would it touch? Uh-oh, it would touch twice. So following the rules of the vertical line test is not a function. For this x value right here, 
we would have two different y values, okay? Now, on the other hand, you know, I'm gonna do a little bonus graph real quick. Do I have a piece? Oh yeah, right here, my high-tech recording studio. Ooh, absolute value of inequalities. Remember those? Say we have, say we have a upward parabola or a downward parabola. Is this a function? So my left and right parabola is not. Up and down parabola, is that a function? Well, let's just try the vertical line test. Boom, only touched once. Because these lines keep going out and down forever. Boom, only touched once. Boom, only touched once. So this parabola is different. If a parabola opens up or down, always a function. Because it only has one y value per x value. Parabola opens left to right. It's still a parabola, but it's not a function. It is different. You guys will be learning this at a later time. Integrated math two and three. Okay. All right. Final thing. What we went over on Thursday, aka today, but depending on when you watch this, function notation. All right. In class, a lot of you guys, uh, I was teaching on basically what function notation is. I'm going to try to keep this brief and simple. Uh, function notation is just a different way, a fancy way to represent and identify a function. There's standard notation. There's a lot of different ways we can represent functions. In this way, it's called function notation. All right? It's read of f of x. You'll see a f with a little parentheses. When we're dealing with function notation, we are not multiplying. Don't multiply the f and the x together. This is read as f of x. You know, f is a function of x, our input. A lot of students, you know, like to think, if it helps, that f of x is really the same thing as y. Like it's my, it's like output. I'm trying to get an output, okay? So what we went over today was evaluate our function, right? This is our function right here. We have f of x. This is our function. f of x is negative 3x minus 6. x is our input, and we want to find out and evaluate whenever we put different inputs, these numbers, into the x, what is going to be our outputs, all right? So f of x, this is part of the homework. We have specific inputs we're going to use, negative 4, 0, and 2, all right? What happens when I plug in negative 4 into the x and solve? What happens when I plug in 0 into the x and solve? What happens when I plug in 2 into the x and solve? Well, for each input that I use, negative 4, 0, or 2, I will get one and only one output, right? Making it a function. So let's do this, all right? Uh, f of x, I'm gonna use function notation. My first input is negative four, all right? Just a fancy way of saying that I am inputting negative four into the x of the equation. Once again, I am not multiplying f and negative four. That's just a way of, of representing my input, what I'm going to be using, equals now I plug this in. And you guys have been doing this all year. You can just plug in and solve. If I have a negative three, that didn't change. Now instead of the x, I'm gonna put in my input, negative four minus six. All right, let's solve this real quick. Negative three times negative four is positive 12. Two negatives make a positive. Minus six, all right, here we go. So when my input is negative four, right, my output is six. Right? So I'm going to draw like a little coordinate point right here. Negative 4, comma, 6. When my, let's move to my next input now. F of 0. Okay, let me make sure you guys can see this. Okay. Negative 3 times 0 is, well, that's nice. Anything times 0 is 0. 0 minus 6, so we still have to, you know, conclude the rest of the equation, zero minus six is negative six. So my second coordinate point then is my x value, which is zero, and I plugged it in, my y value ended up being negative six. So my last one, f of two, two is my input. Running out of room here. Negative three, I'm using this equation. This is my function. This is my, my, my rule set right here. Negative three x minus six. So instead of the x, I'm gonna put in two. 
So I have negative three times two is negative six. Negative six minus six is negative 12. So now my third coordinate point with my input, with my x value is two, what the heck is my y value? I just figured that out, negative 12. And what I was trying to conclude today by the time, by uh, the end of our class, is that this is a fancy way to graph a line also. There are many ways to graph a line, slope intercept form, point slope form, intercept method, so many ways to graph. If we were wanted to graph this function, notice that I have f of x equals negative three x minus six. If f of x can also be represented as y, technically they're kind of the same thing, if this is y equals negative three x minus six, this is in slope intercept form. This is y equals mx plus b. We have our y intercept, we have our slope, we could graph it that way, slope intercept. If you don't want to do that and you graph it function notation wise, just we, we plug in some x values, get the corresponding y value. We have points. If we have, you know, technically you only need two points, but if we have definitely have three points, we have a line, right? So let's graph this real quick. Negative four comma six. Negative four comma six. This is going to be uh, not perfect. Next one. 0, negative 6. Well, if my x value is 0, my y value is negative 6, way down there. And then last coordinate point, 2, negative 12, that's way down there. 2, negative 12, way down there. And if we were to graph this on a coordinate plane, it would be a little more accurate. But look at that, boom, boom, boom. If we were to connect the dots, I'm going to try to, we have a line which makes sense because if we were to graph it slope-intercept method, which we will be doing later, y equals mx plus b, our y-intercept is negative six, our slope is negative three, which is down three over one, down three over one, down three over one, and it follows the same line. So function notation, fancy way of representing functions, you use this f of x, right? If you're given something to evaluate, right? Whatever inputs that we use, you can plug it in, evaluate it. We have our x values. We're going to get corresponding y values. Then you can even connect them further to coordinate points, x value, y value, plot it, boom, and we have a line. All right, guys. Thank you so much. It was ugh, 17 minutes. You guys are awesome. Thank you for watching.